How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today we're going to take a look at these lithium iron phosphate batteries from Power Queen. Normally around 12.8 volts, 200 amp hours. That's around two and a half kilowatt hours. Combined is a total of around five kilowatt hours and my house only uses about seven to eight kilowatts per day. Now in order to actually use these, you have to put it in a system with a hybrid inverter, maybe add some solar panels. When you buy batteries, you wanna know how good they are. So today I'm gonna to open one of these up. It's gonna void the warranty. So definitely you don't wanna do this at home yourself. And then we can examine the internals to see if it's really well built or not. Compared to other lithium iron phosphate batteries, these ones use prismatic cells. This means that the internal cells are this rectangular shape. So it saves a little bit of space. It's also a little bit lighter because it doesn't use as much packaging material for each individual cell. This one is is their more powerful battery. It's a plus version over here, meaning that it contains a 200 amp BMS. It can output up to 200 amps. That means that these batteries together, it's capable of outputting five kilowatts. So you can put this in a five kilowatt system. Of course, if you run it at five kilowatts, it's gonna drain the entire thing within one hour. Let's put this thing on. 43.6 pounds. The previous one that doesn't use prismatic cell is actually 50 pounds, so it's a little bit lighter. It's 20 inches long by eight and one eighth and about eight and a half. It comes with its own little handle thing and it allows you to carry a little bit easier. Same thing on the other side. There's these little nubs in eight positions. Serial number normally goes over here and the terminal posts are covered up by these little plastic pieces. It comes with four M8 terminal screws that are 16 millimeters long. Of course, you only need two of them. You got two extras. And it also comes with this little cover to cover the bolt up to prevent any accidental connection between the two. Manual is particularly well prepared. Not only does it have the specifications, it guides you on how to connect them together, how it's normal normally charge compared to lead acid charging. And it even goes into measuring battery capacity in that whatever voltage that you read, it really depends if you're charging, this charging, and to get an accurate reading, you have to let it sit for 30 minutes before measuring the voltage. It also goes into connecting four in series or four in parallel. Finally, different permutations of connecting them, inverter setting. So I think overall a very well written information booklet. If this is sonically welded, I should be able to just whack it out, pry it in with one screwdriver, twist, put in another one, twist. Okay, it's finally some progress. It looks like cock. Okay, I think I've got it. If you buy more than one, you want to connect them in series. They would most likely charge them to a certain amount at the factory, but they're all the same. So if they come from the same batch, it's most likely that the voltage is gonna be exactly the same. 13.192 and the other one here is also 13.192. So this means I can connect them in series, plug it into my system and off I go. If they are very, very slightly different in voltages, you can connect the positive terminals and the negative terminals together so they would equalize. You should only do this for maybe one one hundredth of a voltage difference and whichever one that has a higher voltage is going to end up trying to charge the lower voltage one and eventually after some time it's going to equalize and they're going to both be the same exact voltage. If they're a little bit too different, you actually have to charge them up to maximum capacity. So let's say this one is at 40% and this one is at 60%. You plug them both in, charge them both up to 100%, then they're gonna be very close in voltage, and then you connect the positive to positive, negative to negative, and let the voltage equalize. After that, then you can proceed with integrating into your system by connecting them in series. We got it open and there's eight prismatic cells in here. You know they're prismatic because they're square blocks instead of these round cylindrical things. Each one of them is a nominal 3.2 volts, so when you add up four of them, it's 12.8 and each pack is 100 amps. So when you pair two of them in parallel, it's 200 amps. The cells are bundled together with two straps. The corners are protected. There's actually quite a bit of extra room in here. I assume their other batteries are higher in capacity, so it leaves room for them to put 
bigger cells in here. So with the extra space, they've put these giant blocks of foam. On the top side, you actually can't see any writings on each of these cells. There's no writing on this side either. And on the top terminal side, there's nothing there because it's just where the terminals are and there's a black cover on top. There's two large six gauge cables that connects to two of the cells. Together is equivalent to about a three gauge wire. There are six 10 gauge wires here, which is equivalent to around 2.3 gauge wire. So it's a cross between two and three gauge, a little bit beefier than the three gauge on this side. There are a bunch of terminals on top. They're connected in parallel and then it goes down into this cell. And two of these posts from the first two cells connects to the posts on the third and fourth cell with a bar, just like this one over here with four tabs. And then this bar connects the third and fourth cell fifth and sixth cell. And then from this one, it goes from one, two, three, four onto the seventh and eighth cell. And it comes back up over here. Each tab is welded onto here. Whenever I'm working on these batteries, this is 12 volts, but it's very, very high amperage, but I'm not too scared of this because if you just use one hand and your hand is relatively dry, you can actually touch this as long as you're not trying to touch um, two terminals together, the 12 volt together, you should be okay. So it's not high voltage, but you should still be careful not to short anything out with metal contacts. This right here is a standard battery balancer. You can see it has five wires, black to the negative terminal, red to the positive terminal, and the middle three is to connect to each cell. When you have four cells, you have five total wires. This right here is the temperature probe. It's glued towards the middle of the pack to sense the temperature. In case there's any over temperature scenarios, it will shut itself down. So the positive goes in here, six wires comes out of the negative here. And this right here is the BMS module. There's actually two circuit boards here. Three of the wires is going in here and three of the wires is going to what looks to be an identical board on the bottom. A bunch of high power transistors and then the three wires goes from here to the output. Another three on the bottom board goes to the output as well. We can see the BMS module says power queen, so they made this themselves. If it ever fails, I do not think power queen will sell you one of these, but you can probably buy another one and wire in another one yourself. When you look at the battery balancer here, this is to keep the voltages across all the cells the same. If one happens to have a higher voltage, it would try to drain those so that the voltage is equalized across all the cells. These wires actually connects to these little screw posts over here. So each of these tabs has one little screw that connects to each of these wires. By the time it gets here, we're measuring two cells over here. So it's 6.596. So each cell is about 3.3 volts right now. And I can't quite reach the other terminal of the first cell to measure that. If I measure from this cell to this last one, it's also 6.596, exactly equal in voltage. If you look at the writing on the PC board here, B1, B2, B3, B4, this battery is four in series, two in parallel. Four times two is eight and it goes up to four, but it looks like it has room to go all the way up to B21, depending on how you wanna configure this whole board. So if you go to B8, this will be a 24 volt battery. If you go all the way up to B16, it would be a 48 volt battery. Also note that on the PC board, there's actually five positions for wires, but it's only using three of them. This means that you could stuff the board with different components and maybe get 300 amps out of this. They do have a 300 amp version of this battery. So if you use two more wires, that would basically do it. Now this BMS board, Board is taped from the back onto the front and the board is zip tied onto these straps over here. So it's fairly secure. It's not going to go anywhere, but for positioning wise, you want to set this with this on the bottom. And if you really must, you want these terminals towards the top in case it weighs it down and you don't want to squish the terminals. It should be like that where the cells are actually sitting upright. After I clean up the cock, it actually just snaps back right on without it being loose. 
So I think I can just leave it like that without recocking it so I can have access inside. Both of these are 12.8 volt, 200 amp hour batteries. They're both lithium iron phosphate. This one has a prismatic cell. These have cylindrical cells. The height and the length is roughly about the same, but the width of the Power Queen is eight and one eighth inch wide versus this other one is about nine and three eighths inch wide, about one and a quarter inch wider. Not too big an issue, but this is slightly more compact. The wire I'm using to connect to the battery is a two gauge cable. Put on the cap, connect the other one. Now there's a question on, do you use a red wire or a black wire for the connection between the two batteries? When you connect to the other battery in series, the other post is red. I just happen to pick red. Cap on that one on the bottom here. All this time, my breaker to the battery is turned off. Okay, they're all tightened. It's off right now, but let's measure the voltage coming out. Make sure it's the right polarity, 26.38. And the top battery, 13.192. Bottom battery, 13.192. Adds up to be about 26.4. Now we can flip on the switch to turn on the whole system. Connecting the solar over here and also connecting the AC. My hybrid inverter is showing 26.5 volts. When I did the first video with the different set of batteries, you saw me using the Chins inverter. It actually didn't work very well for me. I was not able to get it to charge through the AC cable. I did all kinds of stuff, but I eventually bought this eco-worthy one. Everything works just fine. Got it all hooked up to the system. Let's try some load testing now. The Power Queen batteries are capable of 200 amps output but my inverter can only do up to about 120 amps. I'll do my best to max it out with what I have right now, but I'm gonna upgrade the inverter later on. If I turn this one on right now, I got 57 amps output. Let me turn this off and turn on another heater. I got 44 amps with the dish heater. So if I turn them both on, 106 amps or so. The inverter shows the same information, but in kilowatts. So let me turn on the heater and also the dish. It peaks up to about three kilowatts, showing the amp output of the batteries, 100 amps. So it's nowhere near even the maximum, so you can do twice as much. Unfortunately, this is a 24 volt system, three kilowatt maximum, and it's pulled the voltage down to 25.2. You see, when I turn it off, the voltage comes up significantly. So let me turn on the heater again. You can see it drop very quickly. I turned them both on. It drops a whole 1.3 volts to the point where there's an error. I've adjusted the alarm voltage to 22 volts. So if I turn on the heaters again, it's gonna pull it down. It's drawing 2.6 kilowatts and no alarm now. Technically, when the battery's resting, you would think that there's only 10% battery left, but really there's around 80% battery left. It's just that the voltage dropped a lot because we're drawing so much current out of it. Now, through my experience with messing with these batteries, knowing how much capacity you have left is actually very, very tricky. You can't just read the voltage and know the capacity because the voltage itself changes depending on the load. The inverter that I have, it does a lot of calculation just based on voltage. It doesn't really measure how much energy comes out. So there needs to be some intelligence built in some memory aspect to it. And many of these dumb inverters, and most of them are, just can't read the capacity very well. I'm gonna be testing these Power Queen batteries some more. So far, so good. It can do 115 amps, no problem. The recommended charging rate, it's 40 amps. And I've been doing that with an eco-worthy inverter, it's using the power from the wall. Not really solar because I'm not getting that much sun these days. It's in the winter. If you guys are interested in getting a set of these batteries for yourself, check out my affiliate link down in the video description below. Thanks for watching this video. Until next time.